Hi folks, welcome to a new video. This is going to be the final part in the series on my garden makeover and lean-to build. The lean-to is virtually finished. I might add some fascia around the outside and I've still got to add some gutter in on the front. But I'm not going to do that until things settle down and we're not in lockdown. So... Remember, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Leave any comments and, yeah, enjoy the video. Right, so I've fitted the rightmost aluminium glazing bar track. And here I'm cutting down the side F-profile trim. And because it's partially against the side of the neighbour's house and partially clear of the house this has to go in two sections one part of the f profile goes upside down and then the flashing is put over the top of it and the bit that's towards the front goes the other way round so you can see it's in two parts the side that's up against the house will get one layer of flashing over the top followed by a second once the top of the uh, glazing bar is in place. The front part of the trim goes the opposite way round and is secured with some plastic top nails. And this Bostick flash band primer is what I'm using to help bond the flashing tape to the house because without it, the brickwork would probably be too dusty and the flash band wouldn't stick as well. So you brush this on let it dry and then you can attach the flash in. So the glazing bars have to be drilled in order to secure them to the rafters. So mine are just short of three meters. So I've opted for five fixings, which is more than sufficient. So I've attached the lower part of the first glazing bar on the right hand side and now I'm going to start securing the second one. So basically all you need to do or all I'm doing is basically making sure it's up against the house and I'm basically driving a screw in, taking the screw out, filling the hole up with some clear silicone and then driving the screw back in and that basically forms a watertight seal around all the screw holes and that's what the manufacturers recommend you do so that's what I've done So with these twin wall polycarbonate roofing sheets, they recommend you seal one end with solid aluminum tape and that just prevents any water and dirt etc from getting inside the sheet. And then at the lower end, you basically, well it's called breather tape, it's exactly the same but it's got loads of little holes in it and that just allows the sheet to breathe and if any water or moisture does build up in the sheet it allows it to kind of dry itself out now mine came with this already attached which did cause a slight problem later on in the build um, the sheets also come with plastic like protective film on both sides and they're clearly marked which way round they need to go so with the first two glazing bars in place, it was just a case of 
lifting the first sheet up and then multiple trips up and down the ladder to make sure it was in exactly the right position and there was sufficient gap either side for expansion etc. You'll notice that I left the protective film on both sides until I'd lifted it more or less into place and then I removed the lower side So to help secure the sheets to the rafters, I'm using these plastic button caps. They come supplied with a foam-like washer and you drill a hole through the top side of the sheet, just big enough to insert the center of the button through, fill the hole up with clear silicone and a little bead round the outer side of the hole. And then when you insert these and screw them into position, they form a waterproof seal around all the fixings. Now the manufacturers recommend that you don't go over the top with these. Um, so I opted for one in the middle at the front of each sheet and one halfway up in the middle of every sheet. And that should be sufficient to hold the sheets in place along with the glazing bars. So when I was actually looking at purchasing the polycarbonate sheeting, they all recommend that you drill any fixing holes prior to adding the aluminum tape to either end. That way any swarf that ends up inside the sheet can either be shook out or vacuumed out. So I was originally going to buy some after I'd purchased the sheets, but when they turned up, the tape had already been fitted at both ends which, all right, it saved me some money and it was something I wasn't expecting, but I did end up with a few little bits of plastic inside the sheet, but if I'm honest, you can't really see where they are now, so it's just something to look out for if you're planning on using them. So when it came to attaching the flashing, my first thought was to put a sheet up and then run a length of flashing across the top end, um, then attach another sheet and then roll out the flashing and so on and so on. Turns out this stuff is a pain in the ass if you've never used it before. It sticks like you wouldn't believe, which is a good thing, but when you're trying to fit it in a straight line, it makes it really difficult to do. So what I decided to do in the end was to remove the backing from half of the flashing. And then I basically ran it along the wall, sticking it down across the wall, leaving the backing tape on the remainder. And that would allow me to slide the sheets underneath it remove the backing tape completely and stick it down to the sheet. And that was the easiest way I found to do this. Now it's not brilliant, it is a little bit wrinkly, but we've had plenty of rain since this was done and there's been no leaks, so I'm okay with that. And as you can see, there's two sheets in place with two complete glazing bars fitted and it's going well.
So these were the cheapest glazing bars I could find, um, and they basically have an aluminium base with two rubber seals that run the entire length. And then you get this top part with the little like notches on, and that also has rubber seals along the entire length, and it basically clips down into place and squashes against the sheets. And you have to make sure that there's expansion room as well, which you can see there is. And then it's just a case of adding the next glazing bar and following the same procedure. So here's me trying to dig out the little piece that fell into the hole. So once you kind of get that out, just squirt in loads of clear silicone in and around the hole, add your button cap, and then put your screw in. Don't over tighten it because it will cross the sheet. And then you just clip the top in place and that's it. So regarding the side trim, that basically just sits to the side of the aluminium glazing bar. You can see that the glazing bar kind of sits in the little slots in the side of the glazing bar and then the ribs underneath sit in the ribs on the rubber seal. And then you basically just clip the top part of the glazing bar in position and that forms a waterproof seal along both sides. Simple, but works. So to secure the side trims to the rafter, I'm simply drilling a pilot hole and then driving in some white plastic top nails to hold it in place. Here's a quick view from the upstairs window of what it looks like from the top. So the flashing does need a little bit of refining. Um, I have found that you can kind of stretch it to conform to different shapes so i need to tidy it up where it goes over the glazing bars but other than that it's okay so the last piece of trim to be fitted is the drip trim and that simply clips over the front edge of the uh, polycarbonate sheets and you'll see it's got drain holes all along the front on the underside and if you look in the middle there's two ribs that run the entire length and that's as far as the trim will fit onto the sheet. And that basically leaves the section where the holes are open to allow any water to drain out. So the manufacturers recommend a solid seal of clear silicone along the top prior to attaching these drip trims. But I found this an absolute pain in the backside trying to get this piece of trim on. I ended up with silicone all over my hands, all over my clothes, it was all over the sheet and it was a bit of a nightmare to wash it off so 
because they were so tight I didn't actually use it on the other three bits and then it was just a case of fitting the little plastic end caps on the glazing bars just to close the ends in and that's it complete now I'm not exactly a hundred percent happy with the way it looks but that's how it's going to stay for now and I will admit to messing up a bit when I was fitting these trims I was under the impression that the drip trim would go all the way on I didn't realize there was a space where the drain holes were so I ended up cutting the first two covers on the glazing bars slightly too short so you can see the end but it is what it is so I had a couple of short lengths of this timber left so thought I'd add some angled pieces on the front post so I've notched out the back of each bit and drilled some partial holes through because my screws ain't long enough to go through the whole width and the reason I've notched the back out is because the front beam sits partially on top of the post so in order to get the angled pieces flush with the front beam I had to notch out the back so they wrapped around the post and I decided to add a chamfer along the bit where the two meet and I think that looks all right. Then I could just slap a bit of paint on so they match the rest of it and cool that down.
So as you can see, I've achieved quite a lot and the garden now looks a hell of a lot better than it did. There's still a long way to go as far as getting the patio sorted properly. Um, but I'm 90% happy with how it looks so far and what I've achieved. Um, a few little bits I messed up on, but other than that, I'm fairly happy with it. So let me know what you think in the comments. Right guys, I hope you enjoyed this short series on my garden makeover and lean-to build. Next year I'm hoping to sort the area out properly, i.e. laying a patio, maybe putting in a raised planter. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do. It's all down to cost and that won't be until next year anyway, so we've got plenty of time to work out what we want to do. The next video, for anyone that's interested, is going to be a breakdown of all the materials I purchased for the lean-to, how I built the lean-to, why I built it the way I did, um, things I would do different if I was building it over, and I'll give you the total cost of the whole build. So if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button, um, tap the little bell icon, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. and if you're already subscribed, I thank you for supporting the channel and look out for the next video where I go into detail more about the Lean 2 build. So until then, stay safe and you'll see me in the next video. Cheers for watching, guys.